you, buckaroos. This is your old pal, Gabby Hayes, coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir -y Bob. Doggone thing is stopped. I just can't make it run. I wish my old uncle was here. He'd fix it. Watchmaker Hayes, he was known as. There was the greatest watchmaker the world has ever known, human or otherwise. I guess he had more watches than anybody in the whole world. He had them all over the living room, the bedroom, the kitchen, out in the barn. You see, folks come from all over the world just to have him make watches for them. Well, one time he decided he was going to make the smallest watch that he could. Well, that didn't work out very good, so he got another idea. He was going to get one about that big around, you know, about the size of a split pea. Well, he, he finished it, laid it on the table, and the next day he started looking around for it. He couldn't find it. Finally, he ran into it, and he says, that ain't going to happen again. Made a little bell, put inside of it, reach down like that and shake it, it'll ring, naturally. <laughs> turned out to be the first alarm clock the world's ever known. Yeah. <laughs> well, today's yarn is all about a town and its people. Hagerstown were sick. The people who lived there were sick of what was going on. The shooting of John Hagers was the last bit of bad medicine they could swallow. So they sent for a new doctor. The doctor was the United States Marshal. <laughs> Figure just about right, Rawhide. That's the Barton herd, sure. Must be if you say so. Well, what do we do now? Just sit here and watch him go by? <laughs> no. You see that rider way out in front of the herd? Yeah, I see him. He's the man we're supposed to meet up with, Cooper. He's the trail boss of the herd. Man, this is the moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> hey, just a minute. Just because I let you carry that badge is no sign you can wear it. You're not sworn in yet. In fact, I'm taking mine off. Cooper's the only one who knows I'm a marshal. Oh, but Stormy, it's bad luck to take your badge off. I don't believe in bad luck. Well, I do. The last time you took it off, he was almost killed. I'll be more careful this time. Now, get this straight, Rawhide. We're joining that herd as a couple of cowpokes. Our job is to stay with it. And if anything happens to it, to find out why. Way. I just spotted a big herd on the trail. Well, business is getting good. How big a trail crew? Well, they look short-handed to me. There were three riders way out in advance of the herd. One riding point and two outriders. I couldn't tell from the dust how many it dragged. Well, that ought to be easy. Pick your men, Slater, and go after that herd. You know your end of the job, Turner. Tell them how generous I am. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy Buck, boys, we're traveling.
to save any of those steers, get going. Uh-oh. Somebody's down over there. Looks like Cooper. Done for rawhide. Yeah, poor guy. What are you looking through his paper for, Stormy? That's that's bad luck, don't you know that? Bad luck for Laura Barton and her mother, who owned the herd, unless we do something about it. And that's just what we're gonna do. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Okay, tell me the worst. I'm taking Cooper's place. I was in charge of the herd when it was stampeded. Do you understand, Rawhide? Oh, yeah, yeah. Stormy hit Hagerstown, took one look at the situation, and decided to kick up a storm of his own. First thing he done was call a meeting of the decent citizens. Looks like we're the first ones here. Yeah. Well, let's go inside and make ourselves comfortable. Now remember, Rawhide, when they get here, whatever you do, don't let it slip that I'm the law. Oh, golly, Stormy, you're not ever going to get a chance to wear this thing. Why don't you swear me in now? Still a few out trying to find their cattle. We could get word to them later. Now here's what I have figured. We've all been dealt the same kind of a deal. And every other cattleman that uses the same trail we did, they're gonna have their herd stampeded too. Unless we do something about it. How? We can't go against the law. No, we won't. This gang knows the sheriff can't lawfully patrol the trail outside of his territory. But we can. And here's how I figure to work it. We'll keep a lookout on the trail at all times. When the drive enters this section, we'll get our patrol in between the cattle and the raiders. When they start to stampede, we'll surprise them, run them out of the country. But what's more important, we stand a good chance of finding out what's happened to our own herds. Yeah. How does that strike you, Kelly? Fine, the boys are waiting for us.
McTavish. What are you going to do to celebrate this event? Man, I'm going to wear my kilts again. The first time since I earned my name Rawhide by wearing my top this galloping steed. <laughs> Please tell me what we're doing here in Hager's house. I'm beginning to feel like a second story man. When a man plans to kill himself, Rawhide, he usually leaves a note or something. If he did, it's probably here somewhere. If we don't find anything, it just helps prove what I think, that Tim's father was murdered. Well, while you're looking around, I'm gonna sneak a little snooze. newcomer, Matt Haley. Don't know much about him yet, but he has cattle to sell. No move. Put that gun away, Tim. I can explain everything. I'm a United States Marshal. A Marshal? Right. Well, that's different. Did you know your father kept the diary, Tim? No, I didn't. Well, he did. And in it, he tells that he didn't kill himself. In fact, he names the man who did. Listen to this. November the 1st. Matt Haley has imported gunmen and cattle rustlers. Now I know why the cattle I bought have not reached him at Caldwell. I am having a showdown with Haley today. November the 1st, Tim. That's the day your father was killed. Well, that's Dad's handwriting, all right. Do you still think he killed himself? You bet I don't. Well, finding the reason for John Hager's death was all Stormy needed. Now all he had to do was to find Matt Haley. <laughs> Funny thing was that Matt Haley was looking to find him. <laughs> Don't move, Stormy. You overplayed your hand. Telling those people that you're off the stage. Maybe you can tell me what you did with my money before they hang you. I'm not telling you anything, Haley. And when is this hanging supposed to take place? As soon as the sheriff and the boys get here. Suppose we start moving. in the box canyon. The men guarding it are on your payroll. You're the one who's going to hang. Get after him, 
Kelly. Come on with me, Rawhide, the back way. You're under arrest, Haley. For the murder of my dad. Oh, yeah? Just when I was getting ready to do my stuff, too. Did Tim tell you who we are? Well, I guessed it before he told me. What do you want to do, Marshal? I made a mistake in telling Haley we know where the stolen herds are. We've got to get every man possible and get to those cattle before they can start a drive. Well, let's go. close off the narrows, we've got him in a natural trap. That's just what I figured. With four end close, then we've got Haley and our town.
Don't forget, Sheriff. The money we took off that stage belongs to the cattlemen. Be sure they get every cent of it. Oh, sure. I'll see that they get it all back. But uh, anyway, I want you to know it all happened outside of my jurisdiction. Hey, nobody sent the minister home. He's still waiting. Wait? What? Say, it's unlucky to keep a minister waiting. I kept a minister waiting once, and I've been a bachelor ever since. <laughs> I'd call that lucky. Huh? <laughs> For the girl. Oh. <laughs> Jim, escort the bride. <laughs> Come on. Now we're going to have a regular wedding. Da, 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 da. Well, that was pretty good yarn, wasn't it, huh? Yes, sir. You know, looking at that fine horse of Stormy, it's kind of reminded me of an old uncle of mine. Stable boy Hayes, he was an old dad. Now, there's a man that had fine horses. Yes, sir. He, he could learn a horse to do anything. That's all he done, you know, was educate horses. <laughs> he had his own pet horse. That horse could do anything. Any. No, he couldn't. I take that all back. He could do anything but swim. He couldn't do that. Well, one time a bunch of outlaws was chasing my uncle and they come to a great big river and my uncle couldn't get across because the horse couldn't swim, you know. So he was a haze, a quick thinker. He got some logs, tied them together and put the horse on the raft, you know, kind of tied his legs to the raft so he wouldn't fall off and he started to paddle across the river. Well, it was pretty rough and, of course, that raft kept going up and down like that, you know. Turned out to be the first rocking horse the world's ever known. <laughs> well, I reckon that's just about all for today, buckaroos. But I'll be back next week with another rip in western yarn. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir, Bob.